Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to be looking at linking patterns one and two of the minor pentatonic scale. Now, I'm sure you've learned pattern one and some licks and you're blaring away over that and you've learned pattern two and you've got some licks and you've learned the blues scale, so you're throwing some spice in there and it's all sounding really sweet. But a lot of people say that they can't kind of link up between the different patterns very easily. And to be honest, there aren't really any rules to it. You know, you can do whatever you like. You can just jump from one pattern to another pattern if, if it's working for you, you know, that you really want to explore different things. However, there are a few little tricks that I can give you, a few licks that might help you negotiate your way between them and I think it can be kind of helpful to do that. So we're going to be looking at five licks each that's got a slightly different kind of approach of negotiating the different patterns. Uh, the first one, a lot of people see it as a scale actually and that I've quite often seen it as taught as a scale. It actually starts in pattern five which we're not going to look at until series two of Blues Lee Guitar but um, it, it kind of moves from right down this end of the neck to right up here all in the minor pentatonic scale. It sounds like this. It's a very, very cool little idea, this. So I'm going to explain to you how that's working and, and how to play it and how to use it to uh, negotiate your different uh, patterns. Uh, the second lick we're going to look at is using the same note on different strings. Very common blues technique, particularly the older guys here, uh, Albert King and Freddie King. This idea where we play one note and then slide up to the same note and add a bit of vibrato. It's got a few cool little features, that little one. Uh, the third lick uh, we're going to look at is just literally jumping from one pattern to the other by going... It's a little bit tricky, but it's really good for your technique about just jumping from one place to the other. And, and I'll show you some tips on, uh, on how to negotiate that well. Um, the fourth lick is a Stevie Ray Vaughan classic, and this is a really fantastic... It's probably might even be my favourite blues lick of all. Um, if I play it kind of statically, it sounds a little bit wrong. Okay, because starting in pattern one, sliding into pattern two very momentarily, and going back. But when it kind of, once you get used to it and you iron it out the, iron out the wrinkles a bit, it's got, it's got a real it's kind of slinky, I reckon. It's a very, very tasty little lick, that one. Uh, and lastly, we're going to be looking at a similar kind of thing that we looked at uh, uh, in the blues thing, of this idea of having one phrase that can negotiate different sets of strings. So we just have this little... Very, very nice little idea again. Very simple, but often simple things are actually the best. So let's get to a close-up and check out how to play these licks. Okay, lick number one. Okay, very cool little idea this one. So, we're starting off with the third finger in the fifth fret of the thicker string. Then we're going to play the third fret on the fifth string with the first finger, then the fifth fret with the third finger, and then slide that up to the seventh fret. So the first bit, you can see we've transitioned from pattern five, which you don't know yet, but anyway. Started there, slid up into pattern one, first finger in the fifth fret of the fourth string, third finger, it's the middle part of box one, hopefully you're familiar with that now. Then we're going to slide with the third finger from the seventh fret to the ninth fret. So, okay, you can see already we've got that nice little transition. Straight up there, as soon as you've done that, We've got 1st finger in the 8th fret of the 2nd string, 10th fret, 8th fret, 10th fret on the thinner string, and if you want you can do another slide up to the 12th fret which will put you in box 3. So again we're starting with the 3rd finger on the 5th fret of the thicker string, then on to the 5th string, 3rd fret, 5th fret, slide up to the 7th fret, on to string 4, 5th fret, 7th fret, on to string 3, 5th fret, 7th fret, slide up to 9th fret. Then we move on to string two, eighth fret, tenth fret, onto string one, eighth fret, tenth fret, and then slide up to the twelfth fret. Now do try and get it nice and smooth as well, so just... Literally, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and... One and two and... Okay, now it totally works going down as well. 
Okay? You can negotiate the slides with your first finger if you want. I always preferred using my third finger, so actually, an exact opposite. Exact opposite of what we went up with. And I did it there at the end just because I couldn't help it, but sliding back to this note is a really cool sound. You can almost use it as a lick. So, which we're actually going to learn as lick number five, but uh, kind of giving the game away a little bit there. But you see there, I'm just negotiating the scale however I feel like. You don't want to be stuck to having to do it the same way every time. So see how else you can play that particular lick to link your different pentatonic patterns. So for this lick I would normally use alternate picking. So down, up, down, slide, up, down, up, down, slide, up, down, up, down, slide. Again. Down, up, down, slide, up, down, up, down, slide, up, down, up, down. But it's very rare that you play that whole thing, so actually the picking used for any particular section isn't important. Lick number two. Okay, this is, I mean, this is just a great lick, okay? Going from the note A on the thinner string, and then sliding up to the same note on the second string, third finger. It's got a really cool texture, a very, very good kind of ending of licks. A lot of guys use like, so a little classic blues lick, followed by the slide. But you can use it however you like, and in fact the whole idea, you can use it in other contexts as well. This is the most common, and the one that I would recommend that you start with. And the big tip I want to give you is, after you've played this note, when you're going for the slide, don't look at your finger and follow it up until it hits the right spot. Keep your eye here at the 10th fret on the 2nd string, and just slide your 3rd finger up to the point where your eyes are, and you'll be able to slide from quite far away, and jump up and stop at the right place, if you keep your eye there. That's the big deal. If you follow your finger when it's moving that fast, you probably go and overslide and have to come back for it. So, as soon as I'm here and I know I'm going there, eyes are there, and then I slide up to the note. You can of course experiment with E. It's another nice one using first finger there on the fifth fret of the second string, and sliding up to that same note with the second finger this time, just to help you negotiate that part. You know, it's a, you could slide. It just feels a bit unnecessary. It works. It's definitely easier there using your second finger. Okay, some guys jump around between the different, um, as well, very, very common kind of early kind of blues of the, you know, early to mid 60s. Common to do that kind of phrase. So the picking for this one, I'll normally play an up pick on the thinner string, and then a down pick on whatever note I'm sliding to, because I want a bit more force and aggression on that slid note. Of course, it doesn't always happen that way, but that's definitely what I'd recommend to start off with. So lick number three. I want you to get used to the idea of jumping, much like when we talked before about keeping your eye there. When you're doing a little jumping phrase like this, after I finish that first part, so it's just eighth fret, fifth fret, eighth fret, fifth fret, box one of the minor pentatonic, as soon as I finish that, my eyes are looking here, okay, the 10th fret on the thinner string. Eyes are looking at the 10th fret, and then I can jump. It's quite easy. 10, 8, 10, 8. Now, at that point, my eyes are now looking here, kind of through my finger, so that I can jump back either with a third finger or fourth finger, it doesn't matter, whatever feels comfortable for you. Eyes, jump. Eyes looking where we want to go, and jump. Eyes looking where we want to go. You can use the th all three and one if you want to, or four, one, three, one. 
But of course the same idea works in other parts of the neck as well. This particular grouping is a little bit tricky just because they're, they're quite different. But um, that one you could work for as well. But really that's most commonly done on the thinnest couple of strings and definitely worth a bit of practice and exploring that idea. So when it comes to this kind of shifting lick, I would normally be using down, up, down, up, and then shifting with the down, up, down, up. But it would completely depend on what pattern you were playing. Okay, lick number four, this is probably the one you've been waiting for, it's a killer lick. Okay, let's start with it nice and slow because you really want to make sure you've got it right before you start speeding it up and trying to make it slinky. So you start with the third finger in the seventh fret of the third string and you slide it up two frets. Then second finger is going to come off and play the eighth fret on the second string. Then we go back to the ninth fret on the third string with the third finger, slide it back, and then we play the fifth fret on the third string, seventh fret on the fourth string, back to the first finger in the fifth fret of the third string and then we repeat that so it's seven slide nine eight nine slide five seven five one and two and three and four and one and two and three Okay, so you want to practice that up really quite a lot first. Can you hear it? It just changed. Okay, the rhythm changes a little bit as it becomes slinky, but you've got to start with it just really like this. Nice, making sure that you get the technique of it right before you're trying to get it all fancy. So for this lick, I'll normally start with a down pick. Slide, up, down, slide, flick on that last one, and then down, up. So down, slide, up, down, slide, flick, down, up. Down, slide, up, down, slide, flick, down, up. Okay, and lick number five. Okay, again, is this idea of just starting to see these little string groupings of strings one and two, three and four, and five and six as being little couples that you can use. And this particular lick, very, very common little idea. Um, just sliding again down to this note D in the key of A is a lovely, if I just keep it real straight to start off with actually. Even, you could even take away the slide. And of course it extends to... Okay, starting on the D. Move it down to here, this note D. Then down to this note D. Maybe you're starting to see why learning the notes on the fingerboard can be useful. Okay, adding a slide at the beginning. Very, very nice sound straight away. You can also put a curl with the set first finger. Really, really nice. Okay, so it wouldn't have to be the whole thing. It might be... You can see the idea here of just taking this little box and using it to help you shift positions. For position shifts using the little box, it would of course depend on what you played in the box. For the particular example I've given you here, you're probably going to do down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. 
So I hope you enjoy using these licks to link your patterns together. We will be looking at more ways of doing this uh, in later courses because there's, there's an infinite number of, of options there. But these are good ones to kind of get you started with, particularly using that lick one, that really, really big kind of scale looking thing, and also using the same note on different strings. They're the, probably the two big ideas. The other ones I was just throwing in there because they're kind of fun to explore as well. So I uh, hope you have a lot of fun with that, and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.